the core of a game is rooted in being immersed in a carefully designed ambience, it needs to almost immediately grab the attention of the player to encourage them to stick with it. It's a risky gamble, yet a respectable one, and it's born from an incredibly personal vision of the developer, one that can't be fully expressed through words. This experience is all about an unconsciously perceptible blend of feel and tone, as vague as that sounds. But on that note, the new 3D platformer Europa manages to achieve this emotional resonance through its core atmosphere. While its node-centric storytelling may not click with all players, those who engage with it will find a fascinating and engrossing narrative bolstered by creative gameplay ideas. By the time you read this, I'll be gone, and the world will look very different from how it does now. But the island should still be there. Europa takes place on the titular moon described as a lush terraformed paradise in Jupiter's shadow. You play as Z, an android who wakes up in this wondrous world seemingly alone and sets out to discover the truth behind the mysterious fallen utopia. As you progress, Z finds diary notes from his caretaker, sharing personal stories of humanity's early developments on the moon. Furthermore, with the hostile machines scattered around the land, it's clear that some misfortune befell his predecessors. The general gameplay loop involves exploring small open areas with many objectives and optional collectibles before moving on to new locations. The most significant collectibles are diary notes from Z's caretaker. These are fully voiced accounts that do most of the work in immersing you in the world. Besides detailing the bleak history, the voice work is exceptional, providing a realistic portrayal of an elderly man somberly recounting his regrets and long-sought fulfillment. Listening to these voice lines as you explore enhances the pacing, preventing wasted time. In terms of gameplay, Europa features a captivating center mechanic, Z's cipher jetpack. This tool enables momentum-based movement, allowing Z to perform charge jumps or even glide. Performing charge jumps isn't just as simple as a button press, though. It requires understanding the jetpack's innate momentum when crossing gaps. Charge jumps are enhanced by numerous wind streams and emphasized vertically. Cleverly, the jetpack's appearance are noticeable notches indicating the fuel you have remaining for air-based traversal, so you always know where you'll stand. But throughout the game, there are upgrades to increase the fuel capacity, encouraging more exploration. The mid-air movement is impressively intuitive and endlessly satisfying. This aspect becomes the backbone of the experience, instilling genuine delight in each explorable area. Progression stays refreshing thanks to new puzzle types and hazards that regularly appear. Puzzles can involve platforms that vanish and reappear at precise intervals, requiring careful jumps. Sometimes, you simply need to find all types of materials to open up a passage. These obstacles are never particularly challenging, yet they feel satisfying to overcome due to the sheer joy of the momentum-based game play. The violence we have inflicted on the planet is returning to us tenfold. It is the same story as what happened on the homeworld, only here it is occurring at a terrifying pace. While exploring, Z receives prompts to sketch in his beastry. I suppose this is meant to show his attentive understanding of the world around him. However, it does feel unnecessary in a practical sense, more of a distraction than anything impactful, and it fails to create an emotional connection. Still, this feature is only a minor inconvenience that you don't have to pay attention to. One of the most unexpected parts of Europa is the presence of actual enemies. Given the overall tone and atmosphere, I wasn't expecting any real danger, so this design choice pleasantly surprised me. While these foes can't kill you, their attack stun you briefly, and they successfully evoke a sense of genuine danger and corruption as hinted in the diary entries. Another major strength is the gorgeous presentation, making the claim of the land being a paradise completely believable. The environments are reminiscent of a nostalgic era and stay consistent throughout the game's duration, bolstered by variety in coloration and theming. However, even though Europa doesn't overstay its welcome, I feel like the potential of its navigation and mechanics isn't explored as thoroughly as it could have been. It makes me wish it was a modern longer experience beyond its roughly three-hour playtime. We're trying to build something better than what we left behind. That will take time. Generations even. That is why I'm sending you ahead.
an age of constant new video games release that demand dozens, even hundreds of hours, Europa is a welcome one-sitting adventure that makes a lasting impression. Even though its playtime didn't fully satisfy me, what's here is a magnificently moving 3D platforming experience that knows how to showcase its strength succinctly. If you have a free weekend and are looking for a low-stakes title, Europa should be on the top of your list. Noisy Pixel is giving Europa a 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Noisy Pixels run by a group of gamers providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy Pixel.